So I picked up something a little bit different than normal and I figured it was just too cool not to do a video on it and try to figure out exactly what's going on with it. Um, so if you didn't know already, this is a 69 or 70 I believe by looking at the fenders. Case 444. Um, I picked this up at the auction um, a couple days ago. Um, there was actually two of them. This one here uh, that has a mower deck but I'm missing all the brackets and stuff for it. And then there was another one that had a mower deck and a dozer blade. Um, that one sold first for way too much money than it should. And then of course I bought this one actually really cheap. Um, it's got a 14 horsepower Kohler in it that I don't really think is going to be that great of an engine um, because of the condition it's in. Um, so just before turning the camera on I went like this on the spark plug and I realized the spark plug is got something weird going on with it. So other than that hole looks like somebody probably stripped it out and they put one of those little things in there that makes new threads or whatever. You pound it in there and I don't know it's hard to explain. Um, so this is like a spark plug for overhead valve engine and it's way too small. It actually wobbles side to side in that hole. That hole is huge. Um, I have a couple more Kohlers that I could pull the head off and put that on here if anything. Um, missing the air filter and air filter uh, cover which I have. The wiring is a complete mess. I don't even know what to say about this one. Um, that's definitely going to get redone. Um, I do have the hood for it. Um, unfortunately, it's missing a headlight lens. So I'm going to have to figure out something for that. Of course, that just fell off completely. At least it has this side. but yeah, And of course, it's got some bolts in the hood that don't belong. And somebody repainted it and did kind of a bad job. But... I guess it is what it is. I'll, I'm going to end up repainting it anyway. Fully restoring it other than probably the engine. Unless I can get this one to run. Um, put that spark plug back in for now. Um, actually, you can see down in there how nasty it is. Um, one of the first things I'm going to do is probably pull this head off and see what the inside of the engine looks like. Um, something that's really worrying me is looking here. There's no hydraulic fluid in there. It is completely dry. So that tells me that either somebody drained it out, which I'm not sure why you would do that, or it has a really bad leak, which these are known to have leaks from the research I did on them. So we will see what happens. Um, front tires are shot. Um, this one looks like it's trying to hold air. And then this one here is like completely done. Um, it has this lift which almost looks like it's for either like a snowblower, a dozer blade, or something. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that one. Um, yeah, I have no idea because from looking it up, um, the mount for either of those attachments is a little bit different than how this is. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Normally the hydraulic cylinder from what I've seen is towards the middle underneath. Um, Ford in reverse is in a really cool spot which I really like that. It's nice and handy right by the steering wheel. Um, under the seat fuel tank. I couldn't get the cap off. I already tried that. so Fuel tank's probably re really rusty. Um, so I'm going to do some work to this engine and I'm going to come back when uh, I get some progress and I'll let you know what I figure out. So I did a few things since I had the camera on last. I pulled the head off. I went to my parts hoard and I found another head. Um, this one actually fits on there really good. The only thing that's different is the spark plug is off to the side instead of in the middle like that one is. Um, one thing I do know is that someone cleaned this and hasn't ran it since it was cleaned because you can see all the scratch marks on there and they I mean they didn't do the greatest job at cleaning it but hey it's it's clean I guess um, what I was talking about with that little thing that was in there with the threads you can see that now a little bit better um, 
inside of the engine is kind of, you know, okay. I mean, I've seen better and I've seen worse. Um, I think it'll run, actually. Carburetor is in, you know, pretty bad condition. Throttle shaft has a little play in it, but that's not a big deal. Um, I poured two quarts of oil in the tank, and I hooked up my booster to the starter, and then I put it in gear, and I, went, I actually drove forward and back on it, and it does move. I moved the um, hydraulic cylinder right there, and that actually works too. The only leak so far that I'm seeing on here is the O-ring right here seems to be leaking, but that's not a big deal. I just have to undo this connection here, take that out, and replace that O-ring. It's not a big deal at all, so. Um, it seemed to be leaking pretty quick, so what I'm thinking is it was just leaking when whoever had it before was driving it around, and eventually it just, all the fluid came out. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get that other head put on here, and I'll come back when I figure out something else. Okay, so I actually kind of went backwards on uh, tearing it apart instead of putting together, I guess. Um, so I got the engine tore out. Take this over and I'm going to pressure wash it and get all this grease and everything off of it. So I have something clean to work with. Um, that engine will not be used. I'm not exactly 100% sure exactly what engine I'm going to use yet, but I'm not going to use this one. Um, okay, so this is part two of the 69 or 70 case 444. Um, I'm going to repower this thing and I'm actually going to use a Predator 212, which you might be thinking, wow, that's a little small, ain't it? Well, yes, it is. Um, I'm not planning on running any attachments or anything. Of course, can't run a mower deck or anything in the middle because that little clutch right there in that fan won't be used. Um, I have an idea to use the flywheel fan to get air through this radiator so that'll still work and everything. Um, I'll show you that once the engine's in. Uh, so I just got done making this little plate right here. So basically this is going to get bolted on to the side of an engine. I have this blowing up 212 that I'm using as kind of like the test fit engine so I don't dang up the nice one. So there's four holes here. I guess there's more than four, but you line that up with those four shinier ones that I drilled out slightly bigger. It bolts like that, and then those other four larger holes bolt on the outside, and then once as I get that on there, I'm probably going to have a jack with a piece of wood coming up to hold the engine. And then I'll need to make a little thing that comes from here and goes across so the engine can sit on it. Um... Uh, so what this was, is this was actually part of a clutch, or it bolts, bolts the clutch to the engine on a forklift. So it was actually part of that. It was cut off and then grounded down smooth. So this should work really good, and that way it centers it up. Um, I have a three-quarter inch uh, Lovejoy connector, or whatever you call these. Um, Lovejoy is the brand. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what you call it, but that'll go on there just like it should from the factory, and then that'll work perfectly fine. That little piece of metal there will make make this get centered good enough, because I mean, with these, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. It's kind of like a drive shaft um, where a, a joint flexes, you know. So this plastic thing is actually in super good shape. So. Don't have to worry about replacing that because normally those are wore out, but maybe someone already replaced it. Anyway, I'm going to get this engine probably half put in, and I'll come back when I get some more progress. Okay, so I got that little plate and the coupler put on. Um, I actually spaced this plate out because I wanted to actually be able to get to the bolts to bolt this on. I went to put it on the engine and I realized I can't even get anything in there, so... I spaced it out and it turns out I didn't have to, have to actually cut the end of the crankshaft off, which is another bonus. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get this kind of set in there and then I'll come back once that's bolted to there. And then I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do.
to bolt the engine down to the frame. Okay, so after, I don't know, a long time, I finally got the engine in. Um, you can see how exactly I got it in. So I bolted it to these two pieces of metal and then drilled some holes and bolted that down in the frame. Then you can see that coupler piece is in there. It's bolted to this little part and that's bolted to the pump. Engine spins over nice and easy. Camera would focus, there we go. So I think it'll work really good. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna air up that tire, pour some gas and oil in the engine, make sure I have enough hydraulic oil and then I will show you when the thing is actually running. So as you can see by that, it works. I'm actually kind of impressed with it. It works really good. Um, engine seems to have a pretty good amount of power. I mean, it's definitely not overpowered. Um, I definitely wouldn't want an engine smaller. Um, it's, uh, it almost seems like the hydro on it is not very strong. But as soon as you put it in low gear, it's got plenty of power to really do anything. Uh, before turning the camera back on, I was actually going around and I actually hooked up to something heavy that it couldn't pull. And I was able to spin the tires really easy, so. And it almost seems like anything ab above, like, half throttle, it doesn't seem to gain any speed. And it doesn't really seem to do anything other than rev higher and make more noise. So when I get this throttle actually hooked up to the dash, um, which will be after I shut the camera off, I might just adjust the governor to only rev about halfway up because there's really no purpose in it revving up that much higher. Um, yeah, maybe like a 3000 RPM or 2800 RPM is probably what the engine will be set at. Um, sometime after this video, I'm actually going to move this hydraulic cylinder to the back and I'm going to make a hydraulic powered three point hitch for the back of this thing. Um, and then figure out why that front tire leaks. So anyway, I'm going to come back in a second here with the hood put on and it basically about done. And then uh, there you go. Okay, so I got it finished up. Um, I got the hood put on, figured out a hood hinge because that was missing. I got the decals put on it. Um, I made these. Um, they're not quite like how they should be, but I guess it's good enough. Um, so yeah, the hood stops, but it kind of falls back down, so you just got to hold it. Um, since it's really only open to gas it up. Um, otherwise, that's about it. Uh, next video on this is going to be possibly making a three-point hitch for the back of this. Um, what I'm going to do is get some new hydraulic hoses and reuse this cylinder and mount that in the back. And then this... Uh, raise and lower lever will just be used for that and then uh, that'll be about it on this one so yeah thanks for watching I'm gonna have another video up very soon